this week. I'm going to read it to you. Father, we thank you for your word. We thank you, God. I, I mean it, God. We've been changed this morning. Yes. We fought warfare and we won. Yes. Amen. I thank you for the winning, God. I thank you for winning. Hallelujah. And Jesus, you won it all. You made the enemy an open show at the end of the line. You brought us and redeemed our spirits to you. And so, Lord, we submit ourselves to you to have our minds and our souls changed today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Our spirits are already changed. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. It says, Corey Ten Boom said this, It is not our forgiveness any more than our goodness that the world's healing hinges, but His. Yeah. When He tells us to love our enemies, He gives, along with the command, the love itself. Yeah. Wow. wow. Isn't that cool? Mm -hmm. Corey Ten Boom. Some questions remain, she said, but they are not to be feared. Our Heavenly Father holds all things in His hands, even our questions. No pit is so deep that he is not deeper still. Yeah. With Jesus, even our darkest moments, the best still remains, and the very best is yet to be. Isn't that cool? Yeah. This is a lady who spent years in Auschwitz, watched her sister tortured to death by somebody she forgave later. Praise the Lord. Her sister was tortured to death in her presence. She saw her tortured to death, and at the end of her life, the guy showed up in one of her services. The guy showed up in one of her services, and she began to cry, and she went out in the hall. And people went out after her and says, Oh, man, it, it really must be hard for you to forgive him. She said, No, 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 you don't get it. I'm out here knowing that, but for the grace of God, there go I. Yes. Given the same set of circumstances, the same set of circumstances, I probably could have done the same thing. What is man capable of? And she went and embraced the guy and hugged him. She didn't have any unforgiveness for him at all. Because she's received the forgiveness of Jesus Christ. And the blood of the Lamb had cleansed her. Therefore, she wasn't holding anything against anybody else. What a silly thing to hold something against somebody else. What a silly thing to hold unforgiveness in our hearts when Jesus Christ has done so many things. And in 1 Timothy, he says, uh, Paul said, he said, he said, Jesus Christ came into the world to save sinners. Of whom I am the worst. I don't know about you. I pray that prayer all the time. Yeah. I don't know about you. I see myself as the worst sinner there is. The worst one. You might see yourself as the worst sinner there is. Gee, I, I hope you're not putting your self-righteous nose down at somebody else and seeing them as worse than you are. Right. Oh. <laughs> Woo. And so if we see ourselves as the worst one, then yeah. we can realize God can do anything. Yeah. God can save anybody. Right. Hallelujah. So, everybody, the Bible says, consider all men better than yourself. Oh, all Christians are all good men? No. That is a good word, man. Consider all people, all men, better than yourself. Hallelujah. So the weapons for victory will never come by anyone or anything but God. Any victory in your life is not going to be won by uh, government or, did I write them down? Uh, human resources, judicial system, education, government, Hallelujah. military, whatever all else these things are. They'll never be won by these things. Government is not the answer to your problem. Yeah, you're right. Hallelujah. <laughs> Gov government is not the problem. <laughs> Woo, come on. All right. All right. So, in Matthew 16. Matthew 16. My government has a problem. Well, who elected those people? Did you vote? I voted. I voted. Of course. Okay. Praise the Lord. So God sets up who He will set up, and He puts down who He will put down. I didn't vote. The people, are, the people are in authority right now. Are the people God wants in authority right now? Not only in a, in the, our office in Washington, but also yeah. in our city, That's also right. in our schools. All of those things. Preach. If you want things changed, you need to get a grassroots movement down inside of you that says, if I'm going to change things, it needs to happen through me. That's right. Come on. That's right. It needs to happen through me. Yes. It needs to happen when I pray for those people. It needs to happen when I get involved with those things. If you're griping about something, get involved with it and change it. Yeah. We're still in America. You can still do that kind of stuff. You're still a Christian. You can still pray things into existence. Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> I was gone too long, man. I'm kind of excited. 
Okay. So Matthew 16, 19 says this. Oh, let's go up to 17 so we can get a picture of it. Peter just said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said to him in 17, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. Isn't that interesting? I didn't read it anywhere. I didn't yeah. learn it anywhere. Yeah. I didn't get it out of a library. I didn't read it. No, watch this now. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades, or hell, shall not prevail against it. And I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven, and whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Interesting. The keys of the kingdom. The keys of the kingdom. Anybody like living in the kingdom of God? Okay, I'm going to give you a few keys this morning. This is not the answer all of answer alls, but I'm telling you, we've missed something along the way to get our souls free of the things that bind us. Okay, so, so, um, I want you to know there's a couple types, two different strong men. We'll have to deal with strong men, okay, binding the strong men. So let's go first to uh, Matthew, the 12th chapter, back a few pages here. And there's two different kinds of binding here, two different kinds of strong men, okay? Matthew 12. Matthew 12, the 28th verse, it says, If I cast out demons by the Spirit of God, surely the kingdom of God has come upon you. Or how can one enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods, unless he first binds a strong man, and then he will plunder his house? Okay? So that's one type of binding. And I want you to know the one, that word that uh, binding there is the word, um, where, where are my little notes here? They, oh, they're back here. Um, yeah, we'll get to them. Hang on a second. I, I got notes. I'll get to them, though. Okay. So, this this binding here is talking about the enemy, okay? What happens when we bind this strong man? We restrain him from preventing us to reclaim and recovering and restoring that which was looted by him. Wow. Stolen from God's people. So, we bind the strong man so we can go get back what he's stolen from us. Everything, every gift and good, every good, perfect gift comes down from the Father of Lights, in whom there is no value, uh, variance or a shadow of turning. So, if you got something good, it's from God. If you had something stole from you, the enemy stole it. That's right. John ten ten. He comes not but to steal, kill and destroy. Okay. Um, this is natural stuff or spiritual stuff. The enemy stole the natural stuff from you, material things from you, money from you, different things. Okay. So, in Isaiah 53, 12, it says that Jesus will divide the spoil among the strong. Okay? He will divide the spoil. So, he's talking about there, he distributes the booty to the people he wants to. Go to Isaiah 53, just for a second. You, you'll like it anyway. I'll prove to you that what I'm saying is actually in the Bible. <laughs> 53, 12 says... Therefore I will divide him a portion with the great, and he shall divide the spoil with the strong. Because he poured out his soul unto death, and he was numbered with the transgressors, and he bore the sin of many, and made intercession for the transgressors. Because of that we are saved. Because he poured out his soul. Okay? So he says he poured out his soul unto death, and he says he shall divide the spoil among the strong. So he divides the spoil. That word there, dividing the spoil, means to... Um, means to distribute the booty. Pirates, booty, treasure. You get it? Okay, all right. Sorry, all right. Sorry you weren't responding really well there. So it's okay. Go to Luke 11 with me. We'll work on it. What's a booty? I know what a booty is. Yeah. Praise the Lord. We're in church. So, in, in Luke 11... We just been in Matthew 12, we're binding the strong man. In Luke 11, it says, um, uh, we have to read that whole chapter, but the point is, in 21 it says, When a strong man, fully armed, guards his own palace, his goods are in peace. But when a stronger than he comes upon him and overcomes him, he takes from him all his armor in which he trusted and he buys his spoil. Hallelujah. Now we're talking about Jesus there as a strong man. 
In the 12th chapter of Matthew, it's the enemy that's the strong man that we got to bind. Here we're talking about Jesus Christ. Luke 11:22. Jesus is the stronger one. Doesn't say anything about, okay, he's the strong one. So the strong man in this place is Jesus. He's the stronger one, okay? Um, in uh, 1 John 4, 4 it says, um, greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. Amen. So the stronger Amen. one is in me. Amen. Okay, praise the Lord. The enemy comes to rob and blind and impair our ability, okay, to hinder us from distributing spoils back to those who have been robbed, including us. So... We can find the strong man and get back his spoils that he's robbed from us. And here the stronger one lives in us. Therefore, greater is he who works in us than he is in the world. Come on. In fact, in John 14, 12 through 14, it says, Greater works we shall do that the Father may be glorified. He says, If you ask anything, I will do it. Yeah. Okay. So, as we read Matthew 16, 19, it says, Whatever, whatsoever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatsoever we loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Okay? It says, greater works, he will do it. Everything the enemy has laid claim to on this earth has been stolen from us. We are God's created authority on earth. When Jesus Christ died on the cross, he gave back to us the authority that Adam lost in the garden. You all know this stuff. You go. Just, you know, just re get in your minds, okay? So in 1 John 3, 8, it says, For this purpose, the Son of Man was manifest that he might destroy the works of the enemy. Yes. We are into the business that Jesus Christ is in. We are to destroy the works of the enemy. So we are getting back from the enemy the stuff that he stole from our loved ones, from the people that hate us, from other people, and from us. We can get back that stuff. Okay. That's good. So the couple kinds of of uh, binding, okay? We bind the devil. Now, here's some positive binding, okay? In Proverbs, you want to help? Yes. Here. Proverbs 3 3. I got it. Proverbs 6 21. Okay. And Proverbs 7 verse 3. Okay. Okay. So in Proverbs, the third chapter, the third verse. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Isn't that interesting? We're not only binding the devil here, we're binding good things to ourselves. Right. We're binding mercy and truth. I bind mercy and truth to myself. Isn't that good? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Proverbs 6.21 Bind them upon your heart forever. Fasten them around your neck. Woo! Yeah. Bind them. The commands of the, his dad. Okay. In 7.3 Bind them on your fingers. Write them on the tablet of your heart. Amen. The things of God, the commands of God, we bind those things to ourselves. So in Matthew 6, 19, whatsoever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. So when you bind the truth of the word of God to you, guess what? It's bound. That's right. By faith it is bound. What you bind, whatsoever you bind on earth, is bound in heaven. So when I bind my will to the will of God, it gives me a kind of a confidence that I never had before because now I know by faith that what I bind on earth is bound in heaven. So as I bind my will to the will of God, I know when a confidence comes on me, I'm walking in the will of God here. Yeah. So what I'm thinking and what I'm doing is in the will of God. When I bind my mind to the mind of Christ, I begin to think the thoughts of the Savior. Amen. Hallelujah. This is really good stuff. Yes. Okay. So another kind of binding is right up on the wall. It says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to preach good tidings to the poor. This Sent, he sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, the opening of prisons to those who are bound, to proclaim liberty. Da, 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 I'm fighting here. Anyway, okay. In Isaiah 50, what? Bound. Where's it say? Where's it say? Prisoners are bound. Okay. Okay. Those are bound. Okay. The opening of prisons, those who are bound. So, so that word bound there is to heal, bind up wrap about or hold together. It's kabosh. Okay, that word there. In Isaiah 51, to bind up the brokenhearted. Then we go down to those who are bound. It's another word, akar, and it means to make a prisoner, hold fast, gird about, or keep. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. So one is talking about one who is, who is, uh, who is, you ever seen a cradle board? Yep. 
Yeah. But you can just carry Floyd in a cradle board. What you do with a cradle board is wrap your kid in this cradle board, and he is he is solid as he can get. He is not moving around. He was safe and he feels safe and secure. A kid mm -hmm. feels safe and secure when he's bound out of a cradle board. You as Americans can't see that because don't blind your child. My God, what are you doing? You know, and you as an adult don't like this, but kids, they feel safe. Now, as you bind a kid in a big cradle board, wherever you go that's sweet and good and pleasant, the kid goes with you. When you come into the danger, you avoid that and you understand what's going on. Basically, the baby is basically one with the parent. When we bind ourselves to the mind of Christ, bind ourselves to the will of God, and that stuff, we become one. I pray that they would be one as we are one. And so Jesus prayed, I pray that they would be one as we are one. So as we bind ourselves to God like that, we become one with Him. Now, myself, I've been practicing this stuff. And you don't do it just one time a day. Man, sometimes you do it 15 times for one person. Or 15 times for what? For me. So I'm, I come into a situation yesterday where I, where I was a little confused about things. So I bound my mind to the mind of Christ. Because I couldn't think right. I couldn't think right. I was doing stuff wrong. I started... I cut myself my skill saw a little bit for crying out loud. I tried to catch my skill saw when it was running. <laughs> Lord, oh, that's stupid. I, did, um, I got my thumb. Glory to God. His grace is good. But I, I did that, and pretty soon, the peace of God began to come on me. Amen. Amen. So the peace of God began to come on me. I thought, well, I'm not in a hurry. Amen. I don't have to rush. Amen. I'm okay. And His presence came there in that place. Amen. Before that, we'd already prayed, but I had to pray again bring myself back into the city. Remember when we were on that job? And Pep says, we re ruined three pieces of $35 oh, sheeting. Oh, uh, T-111. Really pretty. So we ruined three sheets of it, two. Anyway, Pep says, have we prayed yet? <laughs> so we prayed and we put the whole thing up in like a half an hour. We've it was, seen it more than once. I'll tell you what, with you. So, yeah. So, as we do these things, we bring ourselves back into subjection to Jesus Christ. Okay. So, the things we. Here's some of the biblical things we can find. We bind our, our, our will to His will. We bind ourselves to the blood of Jesus and the work of His cross. We bind ourselves to the mind of Christ, the truth of His word, paths of righteousness, a new Hummer, and things like that. A new Hummer. Oh, I'm sorry. I just I don't know how that got in there. <laughs> so we bind ourselves to things we're absolutely sure are His will. We don't go binding ourselves to things that we don't know about because yeah. whatever we bind on earth is bound in heaven. We don't want to be binding ourselves to the wrong things. Okay? So, the details we leave to Him. We bind ourselves with will and say, it's okay. okay. We bind things that are scriptural. So, if we bind ourselves to His will, in Matthew 6, 9 and following, we find, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So, what we do is we bind ourselves through a prayer of faith we need to co cooperate with His will, so I bind myself or my will to His will. And then I begin to cooperate with God. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done. I take Your will as mine today, Lord. I thank You for it. I bind Your will to me in Jesus' name. Woo! Hallelujah. What it does, it puts a security knowing my will is bound to His will. It brings security into your life. So when some of you might have trouble with decisions. Some of you might have trouble with uh, anger or resentment. It, yeah, where do you want to go to dinner? Huh? <laughs> so, as we bind ourselves to His will, we, we get this confidence that we're, you know, where do you want to go have lunch? We can just say it and know that we're saying the right thing. Anyway, we can bind ourselves to His truth, okay? Like, say, the truth of His... Uh, to the truth of the blood of Jesus and the work of his cross. We bind ourselves to the awareness of the power of his blood to cover, protect, and cleanse us. Maybe you guys don't need that. I really do. We bind ourselves to the work of his cross. The old has died, the new has come. I have died with Christ. I am a brand new creature. So, when we bind our... I'm talking fast, huh? Okay. In Philippians 2.5, he said, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. 
he being in the very form of God, thought it not robber to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, became a servant, even to the point of death, even the death on the cross. So, have this mind. So when I bind my mind to the will of God, I get that mind in me. Okay? It's a faith thing. It's a spiritual thing. I'm not going to... Now, teaching is right. Understanding the word is right. But unless you get the mind of Christ, you don't know when to use it all. You don't know when to have wisdom and how to use it and things like that, okay? Uh, in 1 Corinthians 2.16, we have the mind of Christ. Amen. Okay. 2 Corinthians 10.5, we cast down arguments and everything that exalts itself above the will of God. Okay. Now, I don't know about you, but while I was studying this, it reminded me of Ephesians 6 chapter in the armor of God. <coughs> Helmet of salvation. Breastplate of righteousness. Belt of truth. Shoes of preparation of gospel feet. Baths of righteousness. Faith, the sword of the spirit, abide myself to the truth of the word of God. See what I'm saying here? This is another way to put on the armor of God. He says, it says in Ephesians 6, he says, put it on. This doesn't cause to come by osmosis. This is something you got to put on. This is something you have to do, and if you don't do it, it doesn't happen. I'm glad of that. I don't want this thing that I pray once and when I was 10 years old, and then I'm fine, I don't have to, you know, I like an active relationship with the living God. I like it when he does these things. He likes it. And he likes it. Amen. So, 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 ever, if you, I just figured, I just said all that, so you can access the mind of Christ. You might need to sometime. Okay. <laughs> so back to the cradle board thing, okay? Uh, Hebrews 3.14. I got it. You got it. Hebrews 12.10. Okay. In 2 Peter 1, 4. I'm going to talk about partaking. Partakers of. And then I'll see what it actually means. Then in Hebrews 3.14 we read this. For we have become partakers of Christ if we hold the beginning of our confidence steadfast to the end. Woo! Partakers of Christ if we hold our confidence steadfast, steadfast to the end. Hebrews 12.10 For they indeed for a few days chastened us as it seemed to test them, but he for our profit. Now we may be partakers of his holiness. Oh, praise the Lord. When God is whooping on you, it's for your good. That's right. Amen. Don't yeah. be ducking, just take it. Okay. See, we receive these things by Christ, by faith. We are, we are partakers of Christ if we hold fast our confidence. That means don't quit. Don't give up. Don't turn back. Where would you go? You can't turn back. We've already been there. We got 17 hats, man. We got tennies, t-shirts. They even gave us a pair of shorts once. Okay. So, 2 Peter 1.4. He has given us his very great and precious promises so that through them you may participate in the divine nature, having escaped the corruption in the world caused by evil desires. That's right. They translated that part participant. It's partakers too. A partaker is a participant, an associate, a companion, a fellowship, a sharer. Isn't that good? Yes. So we can share. We can participate in Christ. We can participate in His holiness. We become a companion of His divine nature. Isn't that the coolest thing? So, when the world starts to spin out, as I bind myself to the blood of Christ and the work of His cross, cross my thoughts go to an awareness of His power to forgive, restore, and heal. Really, it does. I partake of Him, His holiness, His nature, His presence, Instead of turmoil and stress and worry, I get peace and confidence. That's what I want. This is really a choice. Yeah. Yes. It's a choice. You can go on and stress and worry and upset and weirded out, and mean and angry and whatever you want to be. But you can have the peace of God. You can have it. Because God is a stable one. We're the ones who fluctuate, right? Okay. We need to be bound to His stability and His attributes. Or we can rehearse our old hurts, get even in our minds, and I want you to know, sooner or later, it'll come out. It will. Yeah. It will. 
it will pop out of you in the worst time. Yeah. Oh, and then every, then you'll then you'll feel really guilty and ashamed, and then yes. you won't go around anybody for a while because you think they'll forget after a little. Right? Christians, they forget right away. You don't have to worry about it. I'm serious. I mean, when you get in a fight with a Christian, you don't have to worry about it. They'll forgive you. They'll set you free. You go back to them tomorrow. They probably won't even remember. Yeah. A real Christian. Yeah. Probably won't even remember. What was that we were fighting about? I don't know. Probably disagreement. I don't know. Okay. So, then the other kind of binding was we bind evil spirits. We can, it can work for their, okay. Binding evil spirits can work for breaking their power in any situation. When you bind the devil, he's bound. So whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. Now, with all the chains I've put on devils in the past, you'd think they'd stay bound, wouldn't you? <laughs> okay, it's a temporary fix. It's a temporary fix, all right? But what gave the spirit access to assault the person's soul in the first place? Take care of that and bring freedom. Yes. Isn't that a good word? Yeah. Yes. Ooh, hallelujah. You can let them back in. Yeah. Some, some, something gave them access yep. Yep. to that place in their life. Okay. So in Luke 11, 21, 22, so we can bind the strong man, loose his hold on our stolen goods, whether material or spiritual, and receive those things back. So we can actually bind the enemy at a time and then loose his power off of those things. Okay. Now in Matthew 6, 19 again, it says... Whatsoever you bind, whatsoever you lose. Whatsoever is an awfully big word. Yeah. Whatsoever means, oh, you know, something really far out and wonderful and any, anything, okay? Now, I figured it was the enemy that was always attacking me. I really figured that. It is. He doesn't like me, okay? The enemy is a liar and a thief, but I'm responsible for my reactions to my past. Yes. Okay, my distorted concepts that I insist on clinging to. Okay, I can refuse to relinquish them or allow him room to receive promises that will bring healing and restoration. Praise the Lord. I'm responsible for those reactions. I like that idea. Yeah. Yes. If the enemy is responsible, I've got to deal with him all the time. If I was responsible, I can repent and lose those things off of me and get okay. Yeah. And the enemy doesn't have any power in that area, and neither does my own stupid thoughts. Okay. It, because in John 8, 32, it says, You shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Amen. Okay. 1 Corinthians 2, 2 Corinthians 10, 4, and 5. We need to read that. Because it's an important thing. 2 Corinthians 10. And you've all read this a hundred times. Me too. Yeah, so read it again. Yeah, I always tell people, I, I forgot what to say. Well, you're a pastor, you can't forget. Okay. I receive that in Jesus' name. I second. All right, okay. So 10 Corinthians, 10 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians 10, 4 and 5 says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God to the pulling down of strongholds. Casting down of arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. So the pulling down of strongholds. Strongholds are the things we build around our, our concepts and our wrong beliefs to protect those things from coming down. We actually build strongholds in our mind to protect our stupid concepts. And when, when God begins to work on those things, we get kind of scared or angry or worded out because we were, this is the only way I can function, man. Yeah. This is the only way I can function. No, no, don't, don't be, no, no, leave that one. We can't do this right yeah. now. So we build these strongholds, wrong beliefs, wrong concepts, so they stay intact. And I wrote down here an example, and I hope it makes sense to you. <laughs> like memories of failure, a sense of inadequacy, even when you are accomplishing good things. Right. Okay? We can feel like, we somehow manage to con everyone, including ourselves, to believing we can't do anything right. Or we can, or yeah. that we can do anything right, okay? We wait for the other shoe to drop. We wait for the rug to be pulled out <coughs> from under us. Unknowingly, we build strongholds in our minds to protect these lies of inadequacy and things not happening right, okay? 
How do we deal with old memories? <laughs> I would think that God would cause me to forget them. Uh, Holy amnesia. Right. Would be nice. Amen. Yes. Oh, okay. But only amnesia would be a good cure, but then who would tell anyone what God has done for you mm -hmm. yeah. and his ability to heal and restore? Yeah. Yeah. His ability to take the hurt out of the pain. Oh, yes. So, I bind. I bind my mind to the mind of Christ. I bind my will to the will of God. And then, I loose off me that lie that I can't do anything right. And, any stronghold I have con constructed in my mind to reinforce those false beliefs, I loose those things off myself. You expose the old memories to God's truth of healing, restoration, and close the door on the power to bind and hurt you any longer. That's right. When you bind yourself to the will of God and the mind of Christ, then you are in a position to loose off of you these old funky memories you have, wrong beliefs, wrong concepts, wrong ideas of things, and the strongholds that protect those wrong ideas. Okay? You can slam the door in the enemy's face at the same time. God perfect love casts out fear, right? Okay. Amen. So before you go to loosing, establish yourself by binding. Bind yourself to the truth of God, <laughs> then loose things off of you. That's if right. not, you might be <coughs> trying to loose things that don't even are even there. Yeah. Right. We gotta okay. We loose, shake off, destroy, disempower, whatever you want to tell you, the power and effects of those memories, and loose the strongholds guarding them. We loose we loose wrong beliefs. Deceptions associated with what we remember. We surrender ourselves and our memory completely to God for His healing power to restore us. Ooh, this is good stuff. Listen, you can go on replaying your inner tape or your CD nowadays, okay, of the hurt, the anger, the guilt, the failure, the shame, the humiliation, etc., etc., etc. You can play that thing over and over and over. In fact, you will because you're already, already thinking those things. In the back of your mind all the time. You're already, already, always thinking something in the back of your mind. And you will respond to what you're already, already thinking. Always, already thinking. Okay. The simplest attempt at binding a loosen can jerk the cord out of the wall of that CD player and pop out the lithium battery backing it up. <laughs> Praise the Lord. It isn't the most comfortable thing to realize you've been wrong, or your beliefs have been wrong, or your opinions have been wrong, but it is important that you do that and get these things dealt with so you're not responding these ways all the time. You gotta change the way that your recorder is going in the back of your mind so you can respond in a better way. And the power of those strongholds, you can't get rid of them any other way. You just cannot get rid of them any way. You can't teach yourself out of them. I've tried. I've tried to preach my way out of them. I've tried to pray myself. I, man, I'm, I'm loosing those things off me in Jesus' name. Because yeah, whatever is loosed in earth is yeah. loosed in heaven. Therefore, I'm no longer bound by those things. Woo, glory yeah. to God. Yeah. So you got to decide. Can God be trusted with the consequences of bringing restoration into your life? Okay? you got to decide whether or not Matthew uh, 16, 19 is true. you got to decide whether it's true. Whatsoever... Whatsoever, is that really true? Whatsoever? Okay. Our weapons are not carnal, they are mighty. Our weapons to tear down what is defeating us will not come from any source except for Jesus Christ. Jesus is not only able but willing to save, deliver, heal, and restore. His name is powerful, it's above every name. Right? Yes. Okay, so I'm just giving you a way today, and I'm going to teach on this next week because there's more to this deal. And I'm going to reiterate it a little more because it needs to be pounded into our head some way. That we can be free yes. of the way we think and act. Yes. And these old patterns and behaviors, bad habits, all those kinds of, kind of things can be broken off us. Yes. Praise the Lord. I like that idea. There's some yes. things in my life that I don't like, been with me for 30 years. Why do I still think like this? Give me amnesia. Do <laughs> something. Really? You ever shook your fist at God? God, you can do this if you want it. <laughs> How about ten people? Yeah. Do you, do you need a lobotomy, Matt? No. Okay. That's probably okay, okay if you talk it to a real anyway. Yeah, that's right. So we can and should engage in spiritual warfare with principalities and powers, right? It's spoken in, in Ephesians 6. 
And like Daniel, when Michael, when he was praying and Michael the archangel came and fought against the prince of Persia and all those things, we should engage in that warfare. But what we need to do, I think, is deal with what's bothering us first before we go after these principalities and powers. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because otherwise we'll be functioning out of the flesh a lot of these right. yeah. There's teaching on that from one end of the spectrum to the other. Yeah, the spectrum. My gosh, you can get see Peter Wagner and Cindy Jacobs and, and <coughs> Rick Joyner even. I love Rick Joyner. I love reading his books, but my yeah. gosh, how do you do that kind of stuff? I mean, he's just like, it's a book this thick. On, I, that's tougher. I like something real practical, something pretty simple. Otherwise, it goes over my head. I might not be the sharpest tool in the shape, but I can be taught. Yeah. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Thank you, goodness. So, so I was, I was, this week, I was just contemplating. I'll tell you what I did. No, I'm not going to. Never mind. Praise the Lord. Huh? No, it's okay. Thank you, Jesus. I'll get you next week. Yeah. Amen. Amen. I will send you the tape. <laughs> it's on YouTube. It's on YouTube. Oh, it's on YouTube. Oh, you did, yeah. You know, I, I watched them a couple times. Uh, Joe does a good job. Yeah. Praise the Lord. Really? It's right. He really does. Yeah. That was really good. I was wondering when they start doing that. His roommates watch it. And now he's coming to our Bible study on Tuesdays, and he's coming to church at night. Oh, Walt? So praise the Lord. Walt. Walt and, oh, and uh, yeah. what's the question? Renee. 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 Walt and Renee are coming. They love it, man. So, yeah, so you know, there are people in, uh, in Tennessee and different places that watch you people worship God. That's right. I mean, we're responsible for a lot of things. There are people in the Gaza Strip that listen to our stuff on the, on the YouTube. That's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So they're excited. In fact, Steve, when he goes over there, he brags about you people all the time because you, this little small place, has given more money to him as a missionary than anybody else. And he's touching oh, Jews and Muslims. For he's down in L.A. right now doing a TV show with the Muslims and Jews, ex-Muslims that have come to Christ, giving their testimony on TV. That's the coolest thing. If you ever want to watch, I, I forget what it what it is called. Even. I'll have to get that. <laughs> but it's, on the back, it's, it should be on the board. Yeah, it should be on the board back there. Some of this stuff is back there. Some, some of CUFI is back there. We support the Jewish nation, CUFI, Christians United for Israel. So, anyway, I think Jesus was a Jew. I don't know. <laughs> 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 you got to be kidding me. <laughs> My dad said. My grandpa said. <laughs> so Lord, we thank you today that your word is true. Thank you, Lord. We receive it from you this morning. We receive the truth of the scriptures. And we uh, are those who do the word, not only hear it. We don't deceive ourselves. So we thank you, Lord, for this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. This evening, we're going to have a potluck at... Uh, Matt and Regina's house. Oh, good. Yeah. So, praise the Lord. Good. That does sound good, doesn't it? So, Lord, we thank you for allowing us to begin this morning. I see the heat was still on. Next month, it'll be the, the cooler. <laughs> so, Lord, we thank you for your economy that always works. Amen. 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 Yeah. So, uh, I'm raising money for Leslie's Hub Scholarship for a Fermi High School student. Right now, after service, I have bookmarks and donuts and stuff right. for for donations. <laughs> All so, right. stop by and check it out. Come, come by and buy some. George. Oh,